Before I start, I want to talk about something a little bit. I started watching a YouTube channel called um, uh, Dr. K Gamer. The the channel is called Gamer Healthy Gamer GG. I'm sure at least some of you in chat have heard about Healthy Gamer GG. It's a YouTube channel where it's a doctor. He he's a doctor that talks about mental issues, mental strength, and all sorts of stuff in the video gaming world and in the Twitch world. He's a doctor that makes videos on YouTube talking about gamers, mental, the mental mind, the mental game, and the mental world of video gamers and streamers, and how to, trying to help streamers and people just have a healthy, healthy mental state and improving their confidence, their identity, everything. He's really cool, and I, I started watching his videos, and they're so good. Um, the first video I saw from him was called. What is ego? He talks about ego, and it's funny because me and Simply have I've been talking a lot about ego and what it means and like how the speedrunning ego. And I think, I think it's really important because I think speedrunners more than most other gamers have a huge ego problem. I think speedrunning induces this kind of ego issue, and we you we have this ego uh, that uh. I think a lot of rage and frustration and impatience in speedrunning lies or is because of ego. And we develop this ego by, by being good at things. The better we get at speedrunning, the more ego we build. And uh, we use that as a way to make us feel better. The ego, uh, or a humgar, I think it's called, uh, comes into place every time we make mistakes or feel bad to make us, to protect us and make us feel like, you know, everything is okay. And we, we, it tries to stop us from feeling negative emotions. And um, it was so interesting. It's so interesting. Oh, man, I would love to talk to simply about this more. I would love to just talk about this more to speedrunners in general, because I want people to know or to realize that this is actually a really big thing. But it's just, you know, it's just ways that I'm trying to figure out how I could help my frustrations to be not as bad, you know, because I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of having these moments where I just rage and slam my fucking chair and I'm tired of it. So I'm just trying to always find ways. How can I help myself to not get as much frustration? How can I control this? And there was a very special moment today when I was practicing. I was practicing Dark World. I was practicing Tsukushima cycle. For those who don't know what Tsukushima cycle is, it's the stupid ass cycle that's way too hard that I mess at 95% of the time and it saves like three seconds. Um, I was practicing Tsukushima cycle today. I decided, okay, I'm not going to use save states. I'm just going to practice the cycle all the way through without save states. And after like 10 tries, I could not even get past the second coin. I could not do it. I couldn't even do the beginning of the star. And I was starting to feel a little bit frustrated. And after like the 10th attempt um, in Dark World, I paused the game and I thought for a second. I, the, it was almost like I had two sides. Like, you know, like they have the angel and the, 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 the devil. The good and bad side. The good side immediately came into play, and, and which is the logic. The logic in my brain immediately told me, okay, cheese. It's obvious that you cannot do this cycle. So let's just accept the fact that it's too hard and let's just forget about it. Let's not do it in runs. It's not even a good idea. If I cannot do the trick, let's not do it. Accept it and move on. We don't need to do this to get world record. And immediately as I thought that, my ego, my ego came into play and tried to protect me, and t which is the bad side, which told me, no, that's bullshit. I'm too good at this game because I have a record. So because I'm so good, I must be able to get this cycle. So therefore, I have to keep practicing and I have to get it. And that's exactly where the frustration lies. It's that exact ego. So I would practice it more and then still realize that I can't get the trick. And then I would get angry. Because in my head, my ego told me, no, I am more than good enough. I am definitely able to do this. And when I can't do it, I get frustrated. Because in my head, I'm thinking, there is no way that I'm not able to do this. I'm pissed off. Fuck this. So that is the exact thought that I had. 
And then I paused for a second and I realized, holy shit, this is exactly what Dr. K was talking about. It's exactly what he was talking about. This is the exact ego he was talking about. So I kind of had that epiphany today. So this is only the beginning. I really, really hope that I could use this to help me get better as a speedrunner and streamer and to help my frustrations. Because I have to, re I have to remember that I have to, I have to stop that ego, that ego of I have the world record, therefore I am good at the game, therefore there is no strat that I won't be able to do. I have to be able to do a strat. I need to find it within me to accept the fact that a certain strat is too hard and I just have to not do it. That's kind of what I've done with HMC BLJ already. I kind of officially realized that strat is just too difficult for me personally, and I don't think it's smart for me to do it. I have to do the same thing with other things. Not only that, another one is today I was practicing SSL 100. And I think simply lost a run in, in this part in SSL 100 today too, is the last pillar before you get into the pyramid, where you do a triple jump. I was practicing and I had a really good SSL 100 going. I did the triple jump on the pillar and I missed timed the A press on the triple jump and I fell and died. And I got I immediately felt pissed off, right? I was like, fuck, I just lost a really good run to a stupid missed A press. And in, in my mind, my ego came into place and it told me, I cannot believe that you missed an A press. You're so good at the game, you have a world record and you can't time a fucking A press. Like what the hell is wrong with you? Right? That's it. That's my immediate thought. And I've said that in stream. There's so many times I would lose a run to something really dumb and I would complain about it. And I would say that same exact thing on stream. You guys know that. You guys, I've said that all the time. I'd be like, dude, I cannot believe I just lost that fucking run, dude. All because I missed an A press or a B press by like one frame. That's so stupid. That should never happen. I practiced that so much. It should never happen. Like I do it all the time. I should never, ha that should never happen. I've practiced this for 100,000 hours. Oh my God. But the reality is, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. My mind does not always do things perfectly. No matter how much muscle memory I have, there will be mistakes, dude. I have to stop, when I make a mistake like that, instead of having the ego come into place and telling me that I'm too good to make those mistakes, I have to have the logical, accepting human side, which is, holy shit, I'm a human being. Well, I made a mistake. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to get pissed off? Or am I going to accept the fact that I've lost over 15,000 runs by now to stupid things, and it's just another run that I'm losing Life moves on. I'm not losing time. There's no time limit in me getting a new world record. There's nothing. I could just try again. Life continues as normal. Which one would I think? Would I have the ego take over and complain that I'm too good to make mistakes? Or will I accept the human error? Maybe feel a little bit emotions, which is it's very normal to feel a little bit angry and sad doesn't mean that I would never rage again. It's very normal to feel sad that you missed a run, you lost a run, or you missed some trick or something. But you move on. Which I don't think I'm too bad at. You guys know, like, I get really mad, but I, I get over it in, like, five minutes, and I just do another run again. I have to make sure that only that side comes into play and not the ego side. That's just a touch on what the ego is in speedrunning that I've realized. There's also the streaming ego, which is a whole other shit by itself. It's so crazy because just the mere fact that, first of all, I would say like 90% of streamers and YouTubers are young, like early 20s, people in their early 20s, even teenagers. That is a very dangerous thing because identity is very, very strong thing, right? People that when they hit in their 40s and shit and they have these midlife crises are usually people that do not figure out that their identity or who they actually are as a person until they reach like 40 years old. And that's what gives them this crisis. And he fears, he said that he fears that a lot of streamers are exactly those kind of people that are bound to hit these midlife crises because a lot of streamers, because we're so young and streaming is a very, 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 streaming is probably the, the most egotistical career that you can have because streaming, what do streamers do? We talk about ourselves 
for eight hours a day. That is what we do for a living. We talk about ourselves and how cool we are and how our lives, that's all we do. Our job is to put on a webcam and talk about ourselves every single day. And that is that is like ego central, dude. We're building ego every single day. Um, but it's a very ego thing, dude. Like streamers, streamers, a lot of big streamers are they're 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 just full of ego. They're just full of look at how amazing I am. Narcissistic. There's a lot of there is an insane amount of narcissism within the streaming community because my job is to talk about myself all day every day. That's what streamers do. That's how, but it's not their fault. Not only speedrunners, no. It's streaming in general. People, when you get so used to talking about yourself and talking to a computer screen, which is what I'm doing, you know how hard it is to get out of that shell when you actually go in public and you have to listen to other people speak? When you are so used to every day, all day, talking to yourself on a monitor screen about you, you know how difficult it is to sit down and listen to somebody else and not turn that conversation around to be about you? Dude, even today I found myself doing it. Today I was on Simply Stream. Somebody brought up something that was interesting to me and I immediately post started posting a message about how that thing related to me. And I immediately realized, holy fuck. Without even thinking. Whoa, I, I was like, whoa. Let me, do not post that. I need to think for a second. Acknowledge what the other person is saying. Let them have their moment. And when I find the time and place, I could talk about myself if I want to. Even if, if, it, if it's even necessary. I'm a full-time streamer and I thought it's only fair if I share my feelings to the people who care about watching me. Because I only care about myself. I genuinely care about what other people learn from what I have to say. Or what I do, you know? Like when people message me and tell me, you being so good at Mario has made me want to start speedrunning. Like, that's that's my favorite thing about streaming. I want people to, to find passions and stuff from watching me. So, and if I ever have anything to say that could hopefully influence somebody to think a certain way or, or to, to make themselves feel better, that's what I want to do. It makes me feel great. I mean, I think it feels weird. It feels almost like I'm building my own ego by saying, yeah, it's true. I'm very selfless. Oh, I'm such a good person. It feels weird to say that, and I don't think I could. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I should have the right to say to other people, "Yeah, I'm a good person. I'm definitely selfless. I'm not a bad person at all." I don't know because that is up to other people to decide. It's not really for me for, to decide, right? I remember seeing was it Louis C.K. stand up, where he was saying that you cannot you cannot tell somebody that calls you an asshole that they're wrong because. Somebody calling you an ass, it's it's not up to you whether or not you are an asshole or not. It's up to other people and what they think about you. And it's kind of true. I can't say I am a good person because I think that's up to other people to decide. If somebody tells me you are a good person, all I could do is accept the compliment. Unless I lack a lot of confidence, and Dr. K also talked about this, rejection sensitivity dysphoria, where people get so used to us accepting something negative that they actually believe it or some shit like that where it's like uh you reach a point where you cannot take compliments criticisms you could take like when somebody tells you something bad you can take it but if something, something somebody tells you something good you can't accept that you always have to find a way to turn it around so if somebody tells you you know you're a really good person you you can't accept that and you would turn that around and be like um, no, I don't think so, because I did this one thing one time that made me seem bad, you know? I don't think I'm a good person. It's like, I think you should just you should just say the compliment and move on. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. And that's that. I don't think it's up to me to decide if I'm a good person or not. My grandmother tells me all the time, you're selfless because you keep paying for our food, you house you know, all our family, even though I haven't even met my half of this family, because they've lived in Trinidad, their whole, their, Venezuela their whole life. I don't know. I, I I can't find in myself to say no. Like I I can't look at these people and just be like, no, fuck off. I you can't live here because it's too much money. I have the money. Right now, I have the money that I'm able to support six or seven odd people. And because they're part of my family, my grandmother's family, I don't. I can't say no. Like it. I I just feel like the my immediate 
thought process is it is extremely, extremely selfish and unfair to have this much money that I have available and just to keep it for myself and say no to all these other people. I'm I'm lucky that I don't care about money too much. Like I'm not I'm not a I'm not a person who cares too much about money or saving a lot of money or being a millionaire. I just I don't really care. I never really cared about that. Um with that said, of course, having more money is great. And I'm going to find ways if I can grow and make more money, why not? It's only good for the future, but All right.